just running along the highway here and uh, check it out. Found a mini sledge. Perfect. That'll go in my collection. I'm only on kilometer five, I think. Still have a little ways to go. I thought that the secondary road went along the highway and not ended and then I had to go on the highway. That's why I'm running here, but it was worth it. Okay, time to get up. I wonder how I'm gonna carry this. All right, I just made it home and this is how I carried the mini sledge. Put it in my pocket and then tied this high res, uh, high res, high vis, uh, piece of safety vest around it. And, uh, it didn't make it necessarily super easy to run having this in my pocket, but I made, I made do with what I had. Uh, you might be wondering why I have this piece of high vis. Uh, a guy stopped when I was on the highway and asked if I was okay. And I said, yeah, and I explained what I was doing. And he said, oh, okay. I just wasn't sure if you were trying to quickly get home because I look like a complete idiot running with crutches. Like I'm hauling ass. No one who needs crutches goes as fast as I'm going. And uh, yeah, so he, he gave me that as a safety thing. He said like, put this around your uh, waist or use it as a headband and like it worked perfect for keeping the handle cinched to my waist but what a score just by an accident route nice all right welcome to another vlog Hey Miles, just need to get this one scanned. night minding my own business when out of the blue my neighbor calls me and <laughs> it's like yes let me outside anyways last night my neighbor calls me this one right here the one who's helped me out quite a bit and he tells me hey do you plan on doing your lawn this week and I'm like doing my lawn for a second I thought he had a problem with how long my grass was but he's not that kind of neighbor so it's confusing uh, he wasn't complaining about my grass. What he was actually doing was he was whispering over this. I thought that would be a little more smooth than it was. This tarp is all sorts of shredded up. I had it in the back there uh, and I, I was going to throw it out, but it started raining. So Ashley put it on our, our new lawnmower. The reason why we're throwing it out obviously is because it's a Sunday tarp. It's, it's no good and it was full of snakes. Actually, 
uh, a couple days ago. So this snake here is not Cooper, but he has a scar on his back, similar, but not as severe as what Cooper had. A little bit down here too. Oh yeah, Unlucky. two scars. So we'll have to, it, when we see a, a snakes in the future, we'll have to see if we can identify them as this guy. We'll have to come up with another name. This one's got his poop chute open. <laughs> 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 He's like, I don't give a shit about what my name is. So anyways, my neighbor, right here, he gave me uh, this lawnmower here, which is so awesome because, look at this. <laughs> ah! My lawnmower that we were using is this one. Now, if you've been following the vlog for a long time, you know about this lawnmower. That was Ashley's grandfather's lawnmower. And it just now decided to conk out. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the problem is exactly, I should say. But. That can't be normal. That's even worse when it actually kicks over. So suffice it to say, that's, is that actually how you say that? Uh, anyways, that's not a, that, we're, we can't use that lawnmower anymore. So then we borrowed this one from our in-laws and uh, it's okay, it's a good machine. It's got all the bells and whistles, it's self-propelled. It's got a turtle and rabbit mode and all that jazz, but it's absolute trash at cutting acreage lawn. Uh, plus, you can't take the bag off, otherwise it doesn't work, and it, it, it sucks. So, my neighbor being the champion that he is, was like, I'm going to get my neighbors a lawnmower. And uh, he got us this one. I saw him a couple days ago, or like, I guess a week ago, test driving it. We're gonna see if it makes a huge difference, which it will, of course it will. Uh, it just needed a new battery, so I went and got a new battery and we'll put that in now and then we can cut my lawn in, let's say, two hours rather than six hours. How about that? What the heck? I think they sold me a dead battery. My neighbor has one of those uh, booster whatever things, and I'll see if he can uh, come boost it, just in case it's just a battery or whatever. Armando to the rescue. All right, who is it? Relax. He's like, hey, screw you! Oh, it's you. <laughs> mm, I'm going. Hey, let's see what you got for a battery. I hope you uh, bought a good battery. I got the best one they had. Really? Yeah. 500 bucks. You're so full. <laughs> your eyes are brown. Uh, What'd you buy, the cheapest one they had? No, I got the second one. They told me not to get the best one because uh, that's for like the lawnmower that you have. Okay. Like that big thing. So I got okay, the second best one. something. Uh, these guys don't understand. Okay. Are you kidding me? What the hell? Dude, I was holding it for so long. Well, thanks for wasting your time. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you're all on video. You gotta hook up your video again so you can
can <laughs> do your first test. First it was a disappointment. Oh no, what's wrong with this thing? No, like, okay, so what I did, well, I had it. Okay. Well, I guess you won't need it there. Okay, sit down. All right. This is... Hold the key on start. Hold it. Okay, so it just takes longer than... How come yesterday it did? Just because you were already using it? Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Sick. Okay, in my defense, this thing is from 1988. That's way older than me. I didn't know you had to hold the key forever for it to start. That's not fair. <laughs> Yesterday when he brought it over, I had no problem with it. If anything, the only thing I had problem with was getting uh, non-blurry footage of the whole thing last night. But, thank you. That's all I can do now is say thanks so much for helping me out. And most of all, thank you for the actual lawnmower, if you're watching. Uh, Armando, you're right over there right now. Sometimes he watches my videos. Uh, it took about an hour and 47 minutes to do my grass, which is insane. Uh, it usually takes way longer than that. And uh, in that hour and 47 minutes or so, I was briefly interrupted because my brother Dave came over and I got him to uh, look at this lawnmower here. Actually, you probably should get a pliers and squeeze this a bit. Yeah? You got a pliers? Yeah, I'll grab it. So, uh, it'll be loose on here. The spark will be better. But... Okay. So, good news. Um, my brother Dave came by because he has this car parked here and uh, he needed to grab something from it. Anyways, he's a mechanic, some of you know that. And uh, I told him what's up with my old uh, uh, lawnmower and uh, it's just a spark issue. I wish I was more mechanically inclined to be able to diagnose the stuff. It just sounded terrible, right? So, yeah, but I think, I think we've figured it out. Well, he's figured it out. Good? Now let's see what happens. Okay. It ended up starting, but... It might still run and all that, but it is pretty low on compression. Yeah, something's broken then. Very low on compression. That's why that noise. Oh, sorry? Yeah, sorry. No. That's okay. But, uh, well, I, would just, I would just use it till it piles up because you've got nothing to lose right now anyway. So it is still broken. Uh, um, the clicking problems came from, this doesn't have a boot on it and normally there's like a rubber boot that keeps everything on there secure. Uh, so some of the clicking came from that because it was arcing pretty badly, but also uh, there was something internal. Yeah, it sounds deeper inside. Hmm. Well, at least now I can actually use it for doing the little stuff yeah. until it's no more. Mm -hmm. But now I'll use it a lot less, a lot less hours. Instead of six hours per mow, it'll be like oh, yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah. Sick. Thanks. I don't actually know if it's going to take 40 minutes to do the stuff that I need to do with this machine. Let's see. So that didn't take very long at all. I actually forgot to time it, but I don't think that took 40 minutes, which is good. I am so stoked to have this. Now, I eventually plan on getting like a zero turn lawnmower, one of those with a huge deck on it, 
but this is a big step up from what we currently have. All right, now my plan for this vlog was not to mow the lawn. That actually is just, that's a consequence of things happening in real life. Neighbor came over and that's what happened. Um, what I was gonna do was build a seating area for Alex's store. If you watched my last vlog, then, then you saw us kind of talking about it there, kind of come up with some ideas. But he actually doesn't need me to do that anymore. He got a, a huge picnic table, which I'm not sure where he got it from. But anyways, uh, I don't need to build that anymore. However, I am still going to build him something. I owe him a, uh, a coffee table. This Archie head right here. He actually uh, traded me that and some other stuff in exchange for me uh, building him a coffee table. What's been holding it off for so long is one, I didn't have a place to build it. And two, I didn't know what kind of wood I was gonna use to build it. However, I think I figured it out. If we look right over there, we see a random pile of wood. And I think it, I think it'll work. I just have to find the right pieces. There's a lot of snakes in this pile of wood. Here's one right here. <laughs> Pop down his hole. This will work. A lot of these have nails in it. Um, the other day I actually stepped on a nail and it went right into my heel freaking hurt. That I've been running. And uh, the first run that I did with that nail through the foot injury is also the first day I decided to try to run without crutches or run intermittently. And it did not go well. Okay, I made it. <sighs> I wish I had a camera crew following me because that was, that was kind of cool. Okay. Oh. Oh. Almost slipped on some mud there. Now, I won't bore you. Oh. I won't bore you with a whole bunch of running this vlog. If you watched the last vlog, it, there was a lot of it. Um, but if you do want to see, know the story about about that one run, I will have a link in the description to it. You know how I just about slipped on mud out there? There was a lot of that. Plus I got lost. Plus it was pouring rain. <laughs> it was anything but boring. Um, and speaking of boring I have to go for a run now so we'll skip that and this is tomorrow ah <laughs> funny bone freaking milk crate of squeeze clamps I've been uh, trying to organize the shop and get everything ready so I have a good workflow uh, which is to say that uh, today is not tomorrow it's actually been several uh, tomorrows I just wanted to get all of the runs out of the way before I came back uh, to do what I wanted to do with this pile of wood I'm standing over. Um, I, I, I'm like done eight days early from the runs because I just ran longer than, uh, than I was required to. My last run I think was like 15 kilometers or so, which uh, totally sucked because it was, um, it just, at first it was okay actually, but then it started pouring rain and then it just after that it just rained a lot instead of pouring rain but at the end I was happy because it was my last my last run in fact I actually ran a whole kilometer and a bit more than I needed to uh, just to as a hmm, serve as a reminder that if I ever want to run again uh, that running sucks <laughs> um, no, that's not actually why I actually ran too far away from my truck. So getting back, uh, I just, I was like, wow, well, I don't want to walk. May as well just keep running. Uh, 
We're done now though. Uh, if you're wondering about my knee, which I bet some of you are, um, it's actually, uh, it's good as new. Some of you are concerned about my health and I super appreciate that. If you didn't watch the last vlog, this is gonna make very little sense. Uh, but it's good. Now, I didn't know at first why my knee was having issues. It just seemed to come out of the blue. And uh, a lot of you suggested it's probably my improper footwear. I wasn't wearing runners, I was wearing Vans. And uh, that could be it because a, a runner has like a really big fat heel on it, which is good for absorbing the impact from uh, running on concrete. But, uh, I just kept on running in the vans until uh, I blew them up. When I only had a few runs left, uh, the left one developed a mouth. So that was terrible to run in back to my truck. I always run away from my truck and then back. And uh, yeah, I had to run like four kilometers back in this shoe. Not great. So then I wore these exclusively, which are good. And you might be wondering, Yo, isn't that uncomfortable? Not really, you get used to it very quickly and it doesn't even feel like anything's on your foot. Like these are super thin and uh, I don't know, I, I love them. One thing though is you gotta be careful of roots. I remember one time on Vancouver Island I was wearing these and uh, I was running really quickly uh, through the forest. I really enjoy running in the mountains for some reason, especially if it's downhill because it's really easy and it's really soft. But anyways, my pinky toe caught a root and yeah, I broke it, so uh, that was not fun. My philosophy when it comes to footwear uh, is like, if people in third world countries can run in flip-flops made out of tires and then become the best runners in the Olympics, vans are probably okay. So I didn't change my shoes, because um, the problem, what, what ended up being the problem was my hips were misaligned. So the marriage between my hip, my knee, and my foot uh, wasn't compatible for running because uh, it just, yeah, my knee absorbed more than it than it, than it should have. Um, so what I had to do was um, a bunch of stretches. And uh, uh, besides that, I also drank way more water and um, improved on my running technique. And that made all the difference in the world. I could go way further like I had way better endurance. I didn't experience fatigue or anything like that. And my, my average time improved. Like I started off with like 8.30 or something. Oh, these freaking meat hooks. I'm just gonna move those over here. I started off with like 8.30 and then like per kilometer, which is terrible. And I, I think my best time was like 6.15 or something like that, uh, which is like a nine minute mile or something like that. And that's still not good, but for a non-runner, that's pretty good. I could have pushed myself, I think, but uh, I'm a little lazy when it comes to exercise. I didn't actually do my best. Um, I, I I could have done better, but whatever. I still I still completed it, um, and eight days early. Uh, but I completed it early because I also had some client work I had to do. Which uh, do you remember that job that? Chakota, Johnny B and myself were working on a little while ago. Well, there was some more stuff to be done. And at the time that we did everything else, we couldn't do this stuff just because of random reasons. And uh, so I actually got back in there and taped out a coffered ceiling, um, which it looks pretty good, but it's not, it's not quite done. Um, I didn't sand it yet. Um, I, I wanted to go to, uh, so there's a gallery that carries my work that unfortunately is closing and uh, I wanted to go to their sale that they were holding at their frame shop. There's an upstairs in here. Man, there's so much stuff. Check out all the moldings for frames. A lot of mats in here. Dang. Okay, nothing up here that I want. At the Additions Gallery garage sale. Came for stuff like this. This is like a, a 
cutter thing, a 45er. I don't know what it's actually called. It's a saw anyways for cutting perfect 45s for, uh, you know, frame moldings and, and whatever you call them. They got a whole bunch back here. This place is insane. I drew that when I had a show at this art gallery. It was on the wall in the back of the gallery where clients don't necessarily go. And so I drew I drew that guy. A lot of other famous artists on here. Let's see here. Goddard, of course. Stickman. Uh, Bateman. Let's see. Napoleone. Vermeeren. I think that's it. But the whole wall was really cool. It's an honor to be on there. Oh, and right there. I remember that I believe was uh, uh, the cowboy artist. What's his name? I forget. Gabe Leonard is is his name. He, he does cowboy pieces. I'll show you that. But this is probably way too expensive for me to afford even though I contributed to it, but I'm not famous. Uh, I'll show you a Gabe Leonard in here. Right here, there's a Gabe Leonard. Here's some Gabe books. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. I wonder how much these are. Maybe I'll grab one of these. But you can see his work. It's like a lot of cowboy stuff. I really like his work. Oh, Bob Dylan. Ooh. That's actually the first piece I saw by him. And there's some more Gabe Leonard's in here. And right over here is some more drywall pieces. And when they're framed, you can see this one's 3,900. It's got Napoleone, Goddard, uh, ooh, Pratursky, um, Goddard and Napoleone again, and Nano. And then this one has Napoleone and Goddard. Of course, those ones are 3,400. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't afford that. I wish I could though, because I don't know if that would be considered a collaborative piece of work, but uh, it would be sick. All right, they're giving me a good deal on them because uh, they carry my work. So I'm getting these books along with this Nano book here. Um, so Nano, he drew that little fish over on that piece over there. You remember me showing you? But his work is mostly sculpture type stuff. Actually, you know what? Here's a better example. A little dragon eating ice cream. And there's another dragon over here eating a cupcake or an ice cream. I don't know. Pretty cool. And then a couple more in here. Uh, and temporarily I had a sculpture right beside his in the actual gallery space. Now they just have, this is their getting rid of stock gallery. All these great artists and, and me. $195 for one of my paper prints. But you can get one for $20 if you get it from me. Don't tell them no. <laughs> Let's see what else there is in here. Didn't notice that there was another nano book. I'll see if they can throw one of these in as well. I'll see if I can find a signed one though. I didn't actually come here for the uh, for the books and stuff. I actually came here for this guillotine cutter and uh, possibly, I'm lost in here, but there's also a compressor and uh, some other stuff like that. Check out this digital mat cutter, that would have been nice. Can't, too expensive. Yeah, this is like a maze in their frame shop here. Oh, another piece of the wall. Yeah, it looks like Goddard's on there. Uh, can't tell who else is on there. That's cool though. 
I keep mentioning Goddard, and just in case you don't know who he is, he's a top selling artist in the world right now. But here's a piece he did. He does a lot of stuff with these olives as like characters. And grapes, here's a grape one that he's done. He's done all sorts, all sorts. But my favorites are, well, my absolute favorite is this one, which is a finger painting. And uh, I didn't actually know it was a finger painting at first, but uh, I dug it and then he told me it was a finger painting and I was like, word. So yeah, one of my favorites right here, or my absolute favorite. And here's another one that he did that's a finger painting. And then he's done one more. Which is this golf one here where uh, most of it is a finger painting except for the, the golf ball itself. And this one happens to be one that was embellished and it's not an artist proof. Um, oh, so, embellished and it wasn't an artist proof. Yeah. Holy cow, what the hell does that mean? So that, that's Ernie, he's the, he's the, he owns this piece. I'm yeah. doing client work right now. Uh, so artist proof is where the painting is, is like he knows he's gonna embellish it. This one is not labeled an artist proof. Yeah, I see that. So he was just, he just embellished it later. Huh. Yeah, so that's, that's unique. Yeah, so it's more valuable than, than the actual artist proof that you, that, that you have. And downstairs you have another artist proof as well. Yeah, I don't know which one, there, there's a- all, The, the there's one? Zen? No, the, the other cigar, one. The big cigar one? No, the other one. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a medium. Yeah, so uh, this is a finger painting slash brush painting, which is kind of cool because I finger paint and I like that. Let me show you why I'm actually here. I'm not here to look at art necessarily, but uh, do you guys remember Clint here? Hey guys, how's it going? So Clint is working on this super bitchin' cigar room, which uh, is, it looks like it's almost done, but there's Close. a lot of uh, trim details that need to yeah. be done. But what do you guys think of this? It's pretty neat. It's a pretty fun project. You got a tin ceiling here, yeah. uh, where it's kind of coved on the sides there. Yeah, we want to catch that kind of old uh, train car Orient Express kind of uh, look how the train cars have the rounded sides like that so sure. this, this stuff's actually plastic but it right. looks so realistic and we just bent the sides in it was just nice and easy and it looks completely a real a little bit fun trying to trim the do the trim round and everything and sure so and you use so this stuff because like the actual tin modern tin is bleh, but and the yeah. vintage stuff is so expensive and hard to and most of the time it's covered in all sorts of paint. You'd have to get it sandblasted. Right, it's just too costly. Right, and then to get it nickel yeah. plated or copper plated or anything yeah. like that would be this stuff looks great. And it, yeah, it looks real. Yeah. It looks real. What other cool things are about this? Well, uh, there's some cool. floating shelves. So we, uh, you know, these guys are going on here. And there's a little bottom on there still yet. So these guys kind of something here. Show you over here. Uh, we're doing LEDs. It's oh, kind of LED the, strips. Kind of the only modern thing we got going on in here, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So I, I made this just far enough away that these tuck down just straight down like that, and they mm -hmm. tack down so they'll be on each one of these. And there's uh, wow, there's probably 15 different colors to choose from on that. Right inside and the cabinets. so these aren't these aren't done quite yet. You got to trim them out and stuff. Still. Yeah, they're gonna be trimmed out. We're just fitting them yet. today. Just fitting them today, getting them set in. They got to be all lacquered or sure. stained and lacquered. Stained, yeah. All right. Sorry. Then you were saying. Um, yeah. So everything in here, like I made the cupboards. Made we bought. You this, made everything. Made everything. Yeah, we bought the metal here, cut it, painted it, installed them, and made the doors. Finished it off with a little upholstery buttons yeah that's cool that's cool detail it's kind of like no one would see it like because you could have just uh fastened that in there but having like that extra oh shit did that scratch that oh, was this piece of oak i think it'd be fine hey move that thing over there okay um i don't think i don't think it did scratch okay that's lucky Ooh, that's good <laughs> that's lucky all right phew that could have been bad. Imagine just having like a just a. <laughs> that would suck. Not easily fixed. Um, the whole point of this is that this is super bitchin'. This room is awesome. 
Uh, good job. Some people might have a question uh, as to uh, why a cigar room. The client just likes cigars. Just like smoking cigars and didn't have anywhere to smoke in, like in the wintertime instead of... It's, it's not the same when you're sitting smoking a really nice fine cigar and a glass of cognac sitting in your in your garage freezing your <laughs> ass off, right? All right. So this is actually like sealed so that cigar smoke and stuff doesn't actually get out. Totally. And nice. whereas like the garage, it's freezing cold and yeah. it might be sealed enough to not get into the house, but this will be comfortable. Yeah, it's all totally sealed with spray foam and everything. So the room, the whole idea is no smoke smell gets from this room out into the house. Yeah. Even the door, which is... Uh, a 1930s door? 1910. 1910 door okay. that's going to go cool. in there. So you've uh, you've made this so that it completely seals yeah. as well. And then there's also this fan here for extracting uh, air. And then... Yeah. And there's a HEPA filter that goes in here also that takes care of about 85-90% of the smoke before it even hits the fan. It runs okay. it through a charcoal filter. It's a freestanding plug-in unit. Okay. Uh, meant for cigar rooms, small cigar rooms. So you're not going to choke yourself out? No, it kind of like it in three minutes and completely exchanges the air, fresh air through here. Right. And then there's also fresh air intake. Yeah, there's well. a fresh air intake in here. So as soon as you close off the door, this place is like, uh, you know, super airtight. And you can feel the air and the little vents in behind here just pop open because it's so tight. And this is an old vintage one. But we made it, it's hand movable like that, just right. so that, uh, or it came like that. But we want to put a seal around it so that the customer can seal it right off so that no smell, even when he's not in here, doesn't go back out into the house, right? Right, right. And then, yeah. So that just kind of, so there's the other one there. And so this one, as soon as the, the doors close. Oh, that's the one that. Yeah, these guys just. Kind of okay. And they only let air in, no air gets out. That's the idea. So we've got that and double protection with this one. We put a slide right. around it, right? Right. And then that, we even might, on the back side, I might make something where we slide a filter down in front of it like you oh, have on a, sure. on a um, heater, right? Like on your right. forced air. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so a... all of this will... Uh, well, eventually, when it's done, still some trim work and stuff to do. Yeah, there will be will serve as a cigar room, and uh, that system, whatever, keeps the smoke out of the part that I'm working on, which is not interesting at all. Uh, I'm actually just <laughs> I'm just taping out uh, this little room here um, because this was an unfinished part of the basement. So I'm just basically uh, finishing up the taping in in here. Um, not the coolest job, but. It's kind of cool to be able to say that I contributed to uh, something like this. See this right here? Clint makes these mallets here. And uh, the when I visited his shop, he actually gave me one that I use in my shop. Here it is. Now this one's been dyed green, but it is uh, it's made out of oak. So it's a pretty good, pretty good mallet. If you've been following my vlog for a while, and you may even remember, man, why did I set up the camera in here with having this wood in the way? It's been several days since I've resumed filming, and this wood has continually been in the way while I've been cleaning this up. But anyways, uh, if you've been following the vlog for a while, you may remember when he gave this to me. Also, you may also already follow him on Instagram. But just in case you don't and you wanna see the progress and finished product of that cigar room, I will have a link in the description to his Instagrams. And if it's possible, I will revisit the cigar room when it's completely finished and show you guys. Okay, time to get rid of this wood for good.
<laughs> what the heck? Well, I guess I need a new belt. That's hilarious. I've never seen that before, where it just breaks. Not even on the seam. Somewhere in the middle. All right. Well, it looks like I don't have any more belts left on me here in the shop. So we're gonna do the rest with the random orbiting sander. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, soak in, cure, and set overnight. Nice. That's the fourth time that this has come off. I keep putting it on and this time I lost the little key. Can't find it in the dust anywhere. So I'm gonna have to find a different way to resaw this freaking piece of wood. I was almost I was almost there for one, but I had to do it twice. So frustrating. I have a table saw out here. That's uh, garbage, but it might have the same key on the pulley on the motor here. Ah, of course it doesn't. What a stupid, oh it does, it does. It's right there, okay. I'm gonna try to knock this off. Take that key and try to put that together one more time. Okay, Allen key to loosen it, and I should be able to just pull this right off. Might be too rusted. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any penetrating fluid, otherwise I would just spray it. But I don't have any. Wreck. If this table saw still worked, then I would just drag this in or run an extension cord to it and use it. But it doesn't work, it's broken. And my job site one is on job site. Damn it, this is frustrating. when I get to Clint's shop, he tells me he's camping right now, so he's not around. He's like, don't let the dogs out. And uh, see that gate right over there? My truck over there? That's the, that's the gate to the property. 
See that dog just going over the horizon? Yeah, that's the dog I wasn't supposed to let out. Hey, come here. Come here, buddy. I don't even know his name. I don't even know if it's a he. Hey. Come here. Come here, buddy. Oh, good boy. Or girl. Come here. What are you what are you doing? What are you sniffing around? Hey. Come here. Hey. Hey, there you go. Okay. That was cold. That actually wasn't so hard. Now I don't know how friendly he is, but let's see if we can get him. He guards sheep. So <laughs> Oh, he's strong. Okay, let's go, buddy. Let's go. In you go, buddy. Okay, there we go. Alright, got him back in. Make sure that this is closed. Ah, uh, adventure time. These are the sheep that it guards, among others, but these are some new lambs. I don't know how new they are, but sheep and lambs. <laughs> If you're an OG viewer, then you may remember me coming here. There used to be a mustache hanging right here. Not sure why he took it off, but it's not there anymore. It was inspired by my shop. I'll put a link in the description to uh, the video that shows my first visit to here. If you're interested in it. I think my next table saw is gonna be a cabinet saw like this. Just way better horsepower. See how much this blade is raised? Normally, that's kind of a, a no-no on a combination saw like mine. On this, it's not that big a deal, but you usually wanna take shallow, shallower passes and then work your way all the way up. Uh, but with a bigger saw like this and in soft wood, it's not that big a deal. Got my two pieces cut. Now I can head back home. Again, have this side set up here, dry, and I'll put a finish on it to protect it all the way around and 
drop it off to its new home. Okay, let's finish this up. So I just called Alex and I asked him if he's going to be home today and he said yeah he'll be home in about 45 minutes so I'm just putting the finishing bits of uh, finish on here and then I will be heading over. He asked me if I could help him uh, hang a couple cabinets in his garage and he has no idea that I finally did his uh, table here. I was even contemplating yesterday when the uh, tail saw broke of just ending the vlog there, kind of on a cliffhanger, but then I didn't want him to get news of the table and then not have it yet, so this is a long vlog, but I'm almost done. Here I come, Alex. <laughs> How's it going? Got them cabinets ready? Well, I need your help to make sure that I got them right. I don't oh, you already put them up. Okay, since you already put that up by yourself. Yeah, but I don't feel super confident about it. But... Well, you already put all the stuff in there. It's going to hold. Hasn't fallen yet. That's good. Okay, come over here. I got, I got to show you something. Okay. Remember like, I don't know, months ago? Well, I remember lots of things from months ago. <laughs> I don't know if I remember the exact thing you're thinking I should remember. Well, I, I brought this, finally. Oh, you got it done. Yeah. You've been busy. You even welded and stuff. Yeah, so this is... Uh, That's really, really cool. How did you... What did you use to clean up the metal? Or did you just clear coat it? Elbow grease. Yeah? And a wire brush. That looks awesome. Well, what? we got to see... <laughs> it's going to be hard to put stuff on it with wheels on top. <laughs> Let's flip it over and check it out. Hey, Melissa. I knew because I follow you on social media. <laughs> you knew I was making this? I knew for sure what it was. How did you know? I didn't even show it. It was like just that one spot. I just, you know, I thought, Here. oh. Wow, this is and hot. When you, when you said, uh, Do you want to set it down and wheel it? Put it down like this. When you said you were coming over, I thought, oh, I was bang on. <laughs> <laughs> you were bang on. Oh, well, it turned out really good. You like it? Yeah, yeah I do. That looks awesome. It's, it's oh, clean yeah. and industrial. Right? So I made it so... You can like... Like there's no slivers, right? But it still has like that rustic look. No, it looks awesome. It does. Yeah. And then it's like some hardware, exposed hardware. And then these are the wheels that came from... Uh, Mary's. Mary's house. Yeah, those are her uh, pottery wagon wheels. And then, so I tried to make it a wagon again. It's a little bit higher than what she had, just because you, I wanted it to be coffee table height. It's still a little lower than a standard coffee table, but it would have looked kind of stupid to have like a whole bunch of spacers to make it higher. And then I also didn't put on the the handle because that would get in the way. But I kept I kept this piece just because it's yeah. you know it's part of it, right? And then that can just tuck underneath. I think it looks great. Thanks. I'm glad you guys like it. Let's. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. Throw it in the living room, I guess? Yeah. See how handy this is? <laughs> Out with the old and in with the new. Looks good there, guys. I think it's Chewy approved. <laughs> this is a really deep couch. Uh, you mean like for having deep thoughts on? Deep thoughts, and now you can like write them down with this sick ass coffee table. Yeah, I think it looks pretty awesome. I like the size of it too. Like, it's not too big that it takes up the whole room, but I like that it's perfect. It's perfect. I'm glad you dig it. I liked making it. This is made out of uh, some wood that I had in my backfield that we were going to burn when I burnt down my old chicken coop. 
didn't have time, but it's perfect because it has like nice character in it. Yeah, it's got some good age to it. And then of course the uh, the wheels, from Mary's house. Yeah. Which are, I had them how long ago did you give them to me? Like last year. Last we were, year or something. We were at the old store. I gave you the Archie helmet at the old location, so that would have been a year ago. Because I was right. still in business at the old store. Okay, I just hung that up a couple weeks ago, and I was like, man, I should really make that table. Did you make eyeballs for it? I did. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is sweet. Uh, how long did it take you, though? Uh, Probably like eight hours or something okay. like that. A lot of it was uh, processing the wood and cleaning the steel. Yeah. That took forever. You had to make a frame for it, too, right? Or did you use most of the I, every th All the steel here, except for these three pieces that I dadoed in, yeah. are all from that wagon. And then I just found these pieces of steel, welded those on, and then, yeah, the wood and, and the hardware and those three steel pieces are the only thing that wasn't something you gave me. I think it's perfect. And we're going to be using it tonight. That doorbell ringing was pizza coming, so it's going to be put to use here like within minutes. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll let you eat supper. I got to go write something on my... Do you want a piece of pizza to go? Why not? <laughs> and then I got to write something on my garage door. Okay. Thanks again, Josh. No worries. Looks awesome. Uh, so we have... <laughs> Okay, remember how I couldn't start the lawnmower before and I called my neighbor over and he started it just by holding the key for a long time? What I gotta do is I gotta put the thing up there, make sure it's in neutral, and then I just have to turn the key. And he said just hold it for a bit. So I made sure the I'm making sure that the blade is also off. I'm on the seat, so there's weight on the on the on the little trip safety thing, and I'm still holding the key. And it's been, how long has it been? Like 20 seconds? I'm still holding the key. Am I crazy? I don't know what's going on. Brand new battery. Only mowed the grass one time. <laughs> what the heck? I'm still holding it. Uh, I wonder if I killed the battery somehow. I don't know. I give up.